With the recent currency volatility across sub-Saharan Africa, analysts propose that import substitution could be a way of stemming this volatility as well as bridge the widening current account deficit. Boni Tunya spoke to Amos Wangora, the acting CEO of the Kenya Trade Network Agency, for more. Amos, let's start with the whole point of just helping most of our viewers understand where we stand if when we talk about cross-border trade from an East African perspective, where do we stand? Um, really, the issue is the competitiveness and being able to trade um, or to allow and facilitate goods um, that are coming into the region. Right. Um, I think the challenge we've had over time is um, inefficiency. Um, whether bottlenecks by um, government bodies, um, the documentation cycles, how long it takes mm -hmm. to intervene and move cargo um, through the corridors right. within the region. Right. Um, and really, I think that's where the um, one of the initiatives of the government is the implementation of the Kenya National Electronic Single Window. Mm -hmm. um, based on the realization that the documentation cycle is too long, too many government bodies, most of them manual, mm -hmm. um, of course creating bottlenecks um, within the system. There's no visibility, no transparency, um, and hence the need to automate right. um, and, you know, and, and, and leverage on e-commerce really to move, um, to move documentation. Right. Um, in studies done, it's been identified that just moving electronic and automating most of those processes mm -hmm. um, will cut down the dwell time by on average two to three days right. um, at the port or at the airport or at the border posts. Right. Um, so, you know, automation is key right. in all these processes. Emma, you've mentioned automation severally, and one of the things that comes to mind, obviously, when you talk about automation is transparency, and it reduces opportunities for graft. Um, from the time the introduction of uh, uh, automation services to where we are now, you might not have the empirical numbers, but uh, what are some of the changes we've witnessed? Um, we've been implementing the single window system for the last two years. The system was launched by the president um, on 2nd of May 2014. Mm -hmm. um, we're now fully operational. Right. Um, 20 government bodies are issuing electronic permits to um, the trade community. Right. Um, the system is available 24-7, which means you don't have to wait for office hours to load your documents. Right. Um, you can do this um, you know, at any point from the comfort of your office as long as you have the internet. Mm -hmm. um, what this does then is that it brings in visibility. Um, you as a, the person loading the documents mm -hmm. are able to tell the status of approval. Um, you get notifications through the system on email telling right. you whether you have an approval or a rejection. Mm -hmm. Now what this does then is that it prompts the government bodies um, to intervene in a timely manner. Now, we, um, we have put in place service level agreements, mm -hmm. um, which then determine time it takes um, to, to intervene. Right. Um, so it really encourages and cuts down on, um, on corruption in terms of creating visibility and transparency right. um, in the whole process. Right. Um, not only from the government side, but also um, from the trade community perspective. Emos, one of the things that uh, obviously uh, is anchored on the success of this would be the cooperation across yes. the region and across the different trading uh, trading windows. Um, how, how is that so far? Are East African countries willing to embrace uh, such efforts? Yes, there are. There are several initiatives already running. Um, the single customs territory, which really um, integrates the custom systems within the region, is part of the um, integration efforts within the ESC region. Um, we are looking eventually at putting in place a regional single window system. Right. Now, it's critical to share information. We are sharing ports. Mm -hmm. um, the ports of entry for all this cargo are shared. Right. We need to share information across um, the hinterland. Now, in order to um, improve the cycle of documentation, then you need to cut down the number of times you have to lodge documents. Correct. Um, leveraging on technology, leveraging on automation, you can be able to integrate systems. Now, most of the East African countries also realize this, and there are efforts f by each of them to implement single window systems. Mm -hmm. So eventually, um, the whole idea is to have uh, one regional platform right. where we can share information um, across the whole region. In terms of immediacy, in terms of the low-hanging fruits uh, to address this, what do you think are some of the areas that governments or indeed players in this space can uh, take advantage of? Um, we, we need to make... Um, you know, trade competitive. We need to be able to export and import. We need um, to put ourselves out there as doing or as creating the environment mm -hmm. um, that is required. Right. Now, initiatives like the single window system are just one of them. Um, but we also then need to be able to sell ourselves in terms of
how fast are you able to move cargo out of our ports mm -hmm. and across the border? Yeah. Um, how fast then um, and how predictable is it? You know, we cannot, you cannot subject an importer to bring in their cargo and it stays two weeks um, because a government body has not intervened. Right. We need specific timelines which we can then sell to the international markets. Mm -hmm. That if you import into Kenya, you bring in raw materials, they, they'll be in a factory within a day or two. Um, you know, identified and documented timelines right. um, for, for which then um, the trade community can be able to um, leverage on. Right. Um, I think that's critical. 